So shall we shall we dive into the list and let's see how briefly we can cover this? Oh yes, Good. we will do that. Okay. Let me just... All right. So here we go. I, I have the list in front of me here, and uh, I'll read the question, and you can amplify, expound, pontificate on the answer. You ready? <laughs> okay. Here we go. Number one: Are Noahides commanded to obey any of the feasts? No. That's it. Two. Ooh, Two. This is going to be good. Two. <laughs> <laughs> Two. Are Noah's well, again, again, remember, we're going to go into talking about these things, why it's not. We already mentioned because, after all, it's only the seven. But we're going to talk about what the feasts are and then why it's not really doesn't relate to Noah's. That'll come up a little bit later on. But you, quick you, answer is no. You, you couldn't just hold by the no, could you? So. <laughs> <laughs> you know, how, how, do, how do you know that someone is a teacher? Answer, you ask him a question. And he tells you more than you want to know. Mm. That's it. So, mm. Very so good. Very anyway, good. okay. Number two. Are Noahides commanded to stop working on the Sabbath? No, they are not. And in fact, if you remember last week, we read from Rabbi Weiner's book, where he specifically told that even during the week to not to, to, to have such a day like that, even not just on, on Saturday. So the answer to that is okay. no. All right. Okay. That's about the Sabbath. Next question. Are Noahides supposed to get water baptized? No. Not just because of that, because if they do, it's making a new religion. You mean like and, mikvah, right? Is that is that the question? Yeah. Like, is it are they yeah. supposed to get mikvah yeah. like Jews do? Is that kind of the question? Yeah. If, if, you, if you do something, get, well, obviously, if you're baptizing yourself, you believe that there's some kind of religious right. significance in that. I just want to so make sure the question was understood. Religion. So, okay. Right. Similarly, what about Circumcision. Nope. Uh, wow. Okay. Are Noahides forbidden from celebrating and participating in holidays like Christmas, Easter, Halloween? What about birthdays, Valentine's Day? And uh, what about New Year's celebrations? Okay. The general rule is quite simple. Um, if it's a religious celebration, <clears throat> then you're forget forbidden to do that. So um, Christmas is the one, I mean, the way it's practiced in America today, it's very hard to say it's a religious celebration, but there are religious parts to it. So, you know, remember Christmas meant Christ mass in the Catholic church, they would have a special religious ceremony to go to special religious ceremony for Christmas, for Christmas. Yes, you're forbidden. Mm -hmm. um, but those holidays that are not religious, uh, Thanksgiving. I mean, it's basically the day when, you know, USC and UCLA play the football game. I mean, it's, you know, it's not, it's not a, uh, it's not a national holiday unless you worship, you know, gods of uh, football, I guess. But, right. uh, you know, it, it's not, if it's not religious, then, you know, you're not required to do anything. You know, you're not required not to do anything. I mean, you know, if, if you like turkey, you can have turkey on Thanksgiving. It's not like, you know, that kind of a thing. Um, so it really depends. Valentine's Day is, is like, you know, I mean, you know, it's, it's not a religious holiday. Birthdays is fine. Um, there is right. actually, we're, there not is the, actually, we're not the Jay witnesses, that's for sure. Yeah, there, there is actually a precedent for birthdays in, in, in the Torah. Um, we know that uh, Paro has his birthday, mm -hmm. so we know about that. But uh, again, the general rule, and as we'll probably go through this again because we wanted, this is an important issue that comes up later on um, in the order of actually going through the local. So sometime we'll go through it again. But the general rule is, is if it's a religious uh, ceremony then you should not take part. If it's non-religious type of thing, you don't have to worry about. Um, we'll discuss about family members. Sometimes when you're with family members, that can get a little bit difficult. So that's more of a personal question. What do you right. do in certain situations? How you get around it? But the general rule is that if it's a religious ceremony, you, you should be away from it. And if it's not a religious ceremony, then no. So a lot of, people would, a lot of people would argue that Halloween is not a religious holiday. It certainly isn't a religious holiday nowadays. It may have had a source at one time, but, but it, I mean, what does that mean? The, that... Little kiddies, the little kiddies are going, are learning how to beg at the doors like good Democrats or something like that. That's you know, you know. So does that, that mean that Halloween is okay for an Ohio? Yeah, listen, you, it's not forbidden. Am I saying that you should, you should you know do things? No, I'm not saying you should do it. I'm just saying that don't worry about. It. I mean, like for example, if you have a family member who has a Halloween party. And you're invited. Eh, don't sweat it; it's no big deal. Cool. I okay. have the perfect. Not... I have the perfect solution for this whole issue. Okay. Okay. And this is for everybody, and we can change the whole complexion of the holiday. 
Okay. I was born on October 31st. Yes. So finally I can celebrate. You can celebrate going door to door. Collecting collecting. candy for Gavriel. No, 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 no. (laughs) I I want, I I want, you know, I want, I want this. Oh yeah. (laughs) And I'll give it to charity. I just set one up. That's pretty cool. For my retirement years. No, no, I'm joking. I'm joking. Of course. (laughs) What about foods? Clean foods, unclean foods. Are Noahides forbidden from, like, say, eating pork products, shellfish, uh, other foods that are listed in the Torah as being unclean? Absolutely not. In fact, if you want to have a ham sandwich and have me in mind, <laughs> all power to you. It's fine. Just, you know, that's, that's, that's just the way it is. You know, you're allowed to eat it. Whatever. I mean, if you don't like, you're not forced to eat it. Yeah, right. I'm not saying you're forced. To eat it. But, you know, if you like it, if you like bacon and lettuce, what is it, bacon and something? Eggs, bacon, bacon lettuce, bacon lettuce and cheese sandwich. Whatever you know, or, if that's what you like. Or bacon you know, lettuce, and tomato. B- 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 you know, BLT. Forgot about it. You no, know, as a Noahide, you don't want to make yourself neurotic and crazy. You know, if you're not forbidden to do it, so do it. What's what's? You know, right. God isn't here to make people suffer. That's not Judaism. Judaism doesn't believe in people suffering. We have restrictions, but even in Judaism, I mean, the, the Gemara and Tana says that a person who fasts is considered a sinner, because we don't believe in asceticism. I mean. Yes, there's ascetic practices, but that's a totally different issue. I don't even want to get into that. That's going to, but it, it's not considered the norm of things. Okay. Right. And, right. and so, as a Noahide, you should look at the same way. Hey, God doesn't want me to make myself suffer. If I like bacon sandwiches, that's fine. You know, okay. so eat it. Are Noahides only to keep the seven Noahide laws, or are there oh. other laws that they're supposed to keep today? And if so, which? Okay. Um, the Noahides are only supposed to, they only, they were required to keep the seven and the seven only. If they want to keep more than that, then they should convert and keep all 613. However, we're going to discuss a lot about these things. There are many things like good character traits and certain things like that, that while you can't say it's commanded and you can't even say it's really a, an obligation, it's something that they should do. And we're going to discuss about that as we go along. Okay, so as far as obligation, you're only obligated in seven. If you think you're obligated more than the seven, then you're really making a new religion. Okay, but if you realize you're not obligated, but these are good things that Hashem, you know, that helps for the world to 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 be, you know, proper and stuff like that, then then we'll talk about some of those that that are specifically things that are very good to be doing. So, Rabbi Shulman, what about Hashem's personal name? I know we're going to talk about this more in depth as we get into. Uh, tefillah, prayer, and it's true with the next two questions afterwards as well. But just as we say, you know, where you and I come from, Bekitsur, in brief. Uh, well, Bekitsur, the, the truth of the matter is we don't know the proper pronunciation because Hebrew is written without vowels. And because of that, we don't know. Um, it's as if, William, if your name was W-L-L-M, which vowels would we put into that to have the proper name? Well, we know the name is William, but if you didn't know what it was, then you would come up with all kinds of different things. And, and actually, 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 it's Wolami. I'm just kidding. But there's a point yeah, right there. Well, that's the whole point. <laughs> yeah, sounds, I mean, like, it, sounds like yeah, Salami. It, it, it's, it, the point is we don't know what it is. <laughs> okay. the, the knowledge of, of how the proper pronunciation went was lost basically about the time of the, almost the, just around the time of the second, destruction of the Second Temple. They really didn't even pronounce it out loud. People couldn't really hear it from, from before that. So we don't know what the pronunciation is. So no, you don't know what it is. So it's better to say Hashem because Hashem means a name. And we see a lot of times in the Torah t- and the Tanakh where it says that you, you should praise the name of God. Yes. So we, when we say the name, we're, we're saying we don't know the name itself, but we're praising his name, whatever it is. You know, the, We have in mind his name. We say Hashem, we have in mind that four-letter name. We just don't know how to pronounce it. So that's okay. why we say that. Last it's, two, it's, it's in the book. Last two questions, and they're really related, so I'm going to state both of them because you can interweave the answer to cover both of them. What must a Noahide say or do to gain the world to come? And can a Noahide or will a Noahide be resurrected to eternal life in the world to come? Okay. Oh, the second one is a very difficult question. But the first one is, is quite simple. What it is is very simple with the Ramam Ted. You keep the seven laws. I, I brought the Hidu, um, what he said, and it, it, it's the same thing in, in Saifa Hasidim. If you keep the seven laws that require to, then you have a question of what to come. Again, 
that's that's what it is. There's other things you have to, like, for example, we're supposed to keep the second and third commandments, but there are other things that we keep that are besides that. But the requirement is based on the 613. So for the Noahides, the same thing is based on the seven. You keep the seven commandments, and that's what you're required to do. As far as resurrection of the world to come, that's based on a disagreement mm -hmm. that, that, that the rabbis have, because Fundamentally, Tanakh is very not very clear about exactly what's going to happen. We're told that we're going to be judged after the world to come. We're told, we have indications that there's going to be you know life after that, whatever. New Testament talks more about it, but New Testament was recording traditions that the Jewish had, but Jewish people had that you know in 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 the first century. Uh, but many of those traditions existed there, but weren't written down anywhere. So we don't really have very much from the Torah um, or the Tanakh. What there is, is, is the question is very simple. We know there's a resurrection of the dead. And we, we know there's a resurrection of the dead. And we know that um, there's a world to come. The question is, is that the same time or is it a different time? If it's the same time, then yes, Noahides will be resurrected in the world to come. Okay, But there's views that hold that the world to come is a world which is a non-physical world. And the resurrection is a physical world. And the, 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 the seven and the Noahites would have a um, place in the non physical world to come, not in the resurrection. So it depends really on what that is. And, you know, Judaism is very interesting. Um, unlike Christianity, we don't worry too much about what's going to happen. We know Hashem is going to give us a reward after we die. Uh, we believe that it's the resurrection world to come, whether it's one or two things, it, it, it doesn't really make a difference. We know that Hashem is going to reward us. And, um, Christianity is like more interested in the reward and in, in, in what you're supposed to do. But as a Noahide, you, should, you know, you should follow the, follow, the, follow the biblical way, which is basically Hashem's interest in what you do here in this world. And he's promised you that gonna, you'll be rewarded for that in the world to come. Okay, so whether the resurrection, resurrection or just end up in the spiritual world, that, you know, <clears throat> that's not important. The important thing is what you're supposed to do. Awesome. Okay, Excellent. cool. Okay. Um, so would you guys say it's a good time to transition into tonight's main topic? Shalom, my dear friends. Hope this message finds you well. If you like the way this channel is going and the channel has been a blessing to you, please consider supporting the channel by going to the website, tanakhtalk.com, T-A-N-A-C-H-T-A-L-K.com. Thank you once again for your time and for supporting Tanakh Talk. Shalom.